I welcome you most warmly on the stage of Weltempfang under extraordinary conditions without live audience, different from other years. We talk about the end of a connected world, how culture can operate in the global crisis. The events around the COVID-19 um, have plunged the world into an unprecedented crisis. Border closures, exit restrictions, not only interrupt global economic flows, but uh, everyone is put at a severely test in the world. How can international cultural networks stand the test and position? How can we find back to each other? How can they help to come closer to each other? Or do we new, need a new system as uh, the idea of a globalized world has become obsolete? This is what I want to discuss with our panelists whom I welcome most warmly, and due to the pandemic, they cannot be here with me, but they are connected, and I would like to introduce them to you. I welcome most warmly Dr. Stefanie Rosenthal. Since February 2018, she is the director of the Gropius um, Museum Berlin. She studied in Munich at the Maximilians University Arts History, and she wrote her PhD in Cologne. From 27 to 17, she worked uh, at the Hayward in London with international artists and was the curator of many exhibitions. I'm so happy that she's with us today. Thank you very much for that. I welcome most warmly the dramaturg and director Matthias Lilienthal. He studied history, theatre, science. She started as a journalist, then he went to Basel as a dramaturg and then to Berlin, Volksbühne. Till 98, he was the head of dramaturgist and 2002 and 2014, he ran the Festival Theatre of the World. And from 2003 to 2012, he was art director of the Heber Theatre in Berlin. 2015, he became the director of the Münchner Kammerspiele, chamber concerts, and he took his leave uh, in autumn, and he's back in Berlin. Welcome. And last but not least, I would like to warmly welcome Professor Klaus-Dieter Lehmann, the president of the Goethe Institute. He had so many different stations in his very long career. I don't want to mention everything. Before he became president of the Goethe Institute from 1998 to 2008, for 10 years, he was president of the Foundation of Prussian Cultural Heritage. End of November, after 12 years, unfortunately, he will... Um, step down as president of the Goethe Institute, and there will be a predecessor. But nevertheless, uh, he will not be lost to book fair. He is a man of books, and therefore, for next year, he noted already the date of the next book fair, and he says since 1974, he has always been there, and therefore, you will be always with the book fair. Welcome very much, Mr. Lehmann. Mr. Lehmann, <coughs> the pandemic. Has it shown limits to you? Because um, basically your work is about international exchange, traveling, getting to know each other. All of a sudden it's no longer possible? Uh, well, we can say so. The Goethe Institute uh, lives on meetings of people, of emotions, of uh, opportunities to go into an exchange, to go into a discourse, and you can meet best if you have uh, physical proximity instead of uh, exclusively digital proximity. So that was really a crisis in which we plunged, because overnight all the institutions uh, had to be closed, uh, hence we didn't have any place, no free room for a dialogue. Uh, for doing uh, stage appearances, events with participants. So that was a real crisis. And now, and that's decisive, we had an infrastructure which we could use to use a digital space uh, to overcome the crisis, at least at the beginning, and to be present. And that was the first impression we got 
because uh, first of all, we use the possibilities of the digital procedures as a transitional solution just to present. But by now, we know that there's also a p possibility to think beyond that scope and to also use the digital media in the future still. But first of all, it was a crisis type situation. Hmm. You mentioned it before, the digital platforms. You, I think very quickly, you started many things, like the project um, Ideas for Afterwards. And in that project, intellectuals and artists all over the world have been invited to report on the consequences of the pandemic in their countries and the consequences of it. Think about it and consider what factors could be helped for the future. How many people do you reach with projects like this and platforms like that? And what is the feedback? How successful have you been? In Nachgedanken, well, this is a, a platform where actors artists and authors think about what about the end of the pandemic and what will happen after it and how will we deal with it. And the interest in such a platform is enormous. I think we have more than 200,000 visits just on this platform, which shows very clearly that in this field we have uh, a listener and observer-based uh, uh, background uh, which counts and that means uh, the digital transformation of the Goethe Institute is unavoidable uh, but we cannot do without the physical type. It is important to link the two uh, hybrid options to bring together the physical and the digital elements it being intertwined uh, in a tr right transitional way because the range is in in is immense, but of course the meetings are still a major asset and to combine the two is very good. We have another interesting platform called Kulturama. It may be interesting for you to hear that Kulturama takes the international culture into the living rooms, meaning that we invite artists and groups of artists to become a parent on this platform, as a spectator, you can enter this platform observing various uh, presentations, be it house concerts, uh, theatres and the like, and you can only see it, but you also have um, the possibility to make donations for the artists taking place in the digital space to also give them an economic perspective. And that also works ex extremely well. We have 50 to 60,000 visits. We have had that already in the first three, four months, and so these are very good possibilities also for the future, in addition to what we do elsewhere in the Goethe Institute. And the visits? Do you have to pay money automatically or can you have a look uh, at it free of charge? Can you tell us whether it was worth it in terms of income? It's voluntary. Uh, we don't uh, ask for an entrance fee, but uh, it, it, we consider it donations. And that uh, involves both uh, small amounts and big amounts. And thus we can move through these times together in solidarity. Mr. Lilienthal. As of the 18th of March, with Münchner Kammerspiele, you uh, introduced the virtual chamber four, where you uh, showed um, uh, it digitally. Normally, you have only chamber two and three. When um, did you understand that you had to close the chamber? And when came the idea of chamber four as virtual space? Well, Mr. Söder announced the closing simply the closure on the 14th of March, 15th of March, it was um, enforced. So it uh, happened overnight, so to say. I was sitting together with a dramaturgist in a, in a conference, in a video conference, saying, well, it cannot be that we disappear completely from the scene. And... Uh, uh, then we started with the working copies of the staging, and then quickly we also considered the video conferences as an aesthetic kind of appearance, and with the social distancing against the backdrop of the pandemic, we used this uh, uh, 
in the sense of the actors to overcome the limitations. But we considered it a demand in terms of content and aesthetics, and then our normal production capacities we have for the theatre, we put in the digital realm, which animated uh, us a lot, and it was a lot of fun. Well, very quickly, you got very positive feedback and reactions. Within a few hours, one recording of No Sex, Toshiki Okada, was clicked 6,000 times, which is astonishing. A cultural offer where you thought before that you need direct uh, exchange between audience and stage, that all of a sudden you can be so successful in the internet, where you sit at home on your sofa, were you astonished that the audience accepted it that well? Yes, uh, it surprised us. But the lockdown of the corona time, on the one hand, uh, was a digital form of uh, education, further education seminar course. On the other hand, we ran from a hipster cafe to a meeting, from meeting to discussion, to theatre, to exhibition. And all of a sudden, everyone was sitting at home. If people had uh, kids, uh, they were... <coughs> terrorized by the kids to work along these lines and then in the evening you were reduced to yourself suddenly and then you could use these digital offers or read something. Interestingly enough, in the work of Toshiki Okada, we also did other stagings where we had 7,000 spectators in Japan, mind you, and uh, for the theatre meeting in Berlin, I would wish to see that staging shown in parallel on the internet should be shown, and international uh, connection should take place differently. Peter Anderson from the Goethe Institute Tokyo said, in Asia, these festivals were much more successful than when they were still analog. Well, that means that this is also a chance for culture to be perceived differently internationally and also addressing or generating a much larger audience. Well, we should not be misled. Should there be an end of the pandemic, of which I'm not that convinced, of course, a major portion of our own lifestyle will be taken up again, and then such things will break away partially. But uh, we have been shown very clearly that the digital channels uh, to be used in a different way is extremely important. Mrs. Rosenthal, I think for about two months you were closed in the Gropiusbau in the museum and the exhibition of the U.S.-Taiwan artist Li Min Wai had to be postponed, but part of the exhibition was put into the digital world, the internet. How did it work, an exhibition that basically um, was designed for uh, an exhibition museum and all of a sudden you transferred it to a different media and to the virtual net, and how was it perceived? Well, it functioned well, but it was important for us from the beginning that it doesn't replace uh, an exhibition. And we didn't want to consider this uh, an experiment for ourselves. We didn't do our, uh, any round tours or saying you can see the exhibition digitally if you don't want to come. Basing on the fact that us as an institution do believe that uh, the context for the visitors, the visual experience is most important. You need to experience it. Uh, digital is a totally different project. That's how we approached it. So we didn't say that we want to take uh, the, everything into the digital realm, but we say if we do something for the digital space, then we do it likewise. And uh, we realized this quickly and uh, we reconceived uh, things uh, and in this way and also in going into heart to heart talks because it's about the exchange of human beings and then he did it through Zoom or Team, depending what the people wanted to do. Uh, there was one uh, work, Sonic Blossom, which he called Indication for Dawn, where someone was singing a song for someone. So he was assigned uh, um, appointments and then he could 
do it in this way. But uh, you cannot, we didn't just say you can do the exhibition in an optional way. And he also invited people to call letters for oneself, where people could uh, correspond with the world in this kind of exchange. Hence, poetic projects which functioned well, also on the level uh, saying, uh, what do we want to contribute as a basic position, being the host, uh, inviting people for an exchange, asking what our visitors need, and then through the instance of the letters of singing, also present kind of uh, a caring function, but not replacing the function of a visit. So we're still dealing with the major issues that a visit to an exhibition cannot be replaced. But in an interconnected way, we want to show our options, also involving a very large Berlin audience, much more than elsewhere, because people cannot travel. And also in the theater meeting, or the thing meet, mentioned by Lilian Chan, we say that we also need to give the international audience a feeling of attending an exhibition, also asking what we should do again when we reopen, getting prepared for the phase in which we would reopen to welcome our visitors day and again. But from the point of view of the German Association of Museums, I read that also beyond the corona crisis, there should be um, digital possibilities and further developed. Um, do you see it the same way, or would you say it's only the second best option, it cannot be the best option? It's a central option and function which we have uh, developed for years already with podcasts, with online journals, platforms, round tours, and uh, all these things are being built in. We have developed this uh, thing since 2018, uh, but it's still exciting to find out whether the pandemic means that we could uh, copy exhibitions in the digi digital space. Now we are fortunate as an institution that we get more funding for this purpose. We now have the option to, to request support and funding to further develop our digital office. But as Mr. Lehmann said, this is rather kind of overlapping, asking how we can go deeper, how we can do digitorials. But all of that doesn't replace a visit to an exhibition. That is a different approach. To, for that matter. And if you take a dance to a museum, you don't just take a, a piece of theater to the museum, but you do something for the museum. I think Mr. Lienenthal wanted to say something, and after that, Mr. Lehmann. For the theater, I would phrase it totally differently. I would really consider a production only for the digital realm, the digital presence, can replace the primary experience of art visit. And uh, f f f I would redistribute funding in favor of digitality. But don't you think there is the need for the exchange between stage and audience? This is missing? I don't say it shall be abandoned. But uh, the recording budgets should be trebled, and uh, one or two positions of 16 or 18 I would uh, release for digital production, because in the museums, in the exhibition rooms and the theatres, this has already made its way very strongly, and it now gets more importance, and this uh, international interconnection, uh, since our journeys are no longer possible, uh, not to the same extent should be uh, reinforced beyond the digital realm. So that means for you this is rather a chance, all these experiments taking place everywhere. It's not only you who do it, but also the Doc Festival. Um, Munich was completely transferred to the Internet, so people at different places in Germany, um, never ever having the chance to go to the Doc Festival, could do that now, or the Salzburg Festival. I mean, you can completely see it as well. That opens up new possibilities of listening in and viewing. Um, so is it a chance for you as well to generate a new audience? 
rather than maybe uh, something um, re not replacing, but that may come in addition and uh, will be with us in the future? While the conventional experience of art can be replaced to a certain extent, and uh, that will also be part of the future. And I'm interested in all the uh, hybrid uh, forms between digital and analog, and even the purely digital forms of it. And so far, the pandemic has taken us into kind of a future which we had to expect anyway. Mr. Lehmann, you wanted to add a point here? Well, the snag is, as has been said, what has surprised us most is the exclusive nature of the digital communication as an emergency solution when the crisis came. And, of course, this cannot be accepted like that in culture, that it can only happen through means of uh, digital. Uh, so the pandemic only accelerated this since everyone was working on digital transformation of their tools anyway. And this has been accelerated by the crisis type situation. And the long-term nature of thinking need to be contributed now, considering what can happen on the digital side in terms of quality and on the analog side in terms of quality. And the two spheres need to be taken closer to one another. This need to keep us busy now, and this is a great chance for us. The digital uh, options won't be ended anymore, but we'll state very clearly that uh, the digital element is not there for emergency situations, but that it needs to develop its own quality. But don't you think that this is a disadvantage for smaller institutions um, or museums? Um, that don't have that money and that don't have the competence to go into the internet? Don't you think that smaller galleries, smaller theatres might be put at a disadvantage? I think the digital also has a terms of equal opportunity, also in financial terms, although there are certainly restrictions. I mean, for a large uh, company, it's easier to fund something. So for us, it's really a great opportunity. And for smaller institutions, well, they are more flexible uh, because they can react m more speedily and also work in smaller teams. We've also found that you can do many things with simple means, considering the, the digital realm. Uh, uh, the great chance now really is uh, to develop this further and work on the hi hybrid forms. For us, it's quite clear since we had different problems than the theatres. In our case, people are moving through anyway. We have uh, monitoring uh, institutions. Uh, it's not like in theatres or concerts where you, know, you have an open f uh, feeling. Mm even in uh, uh, digital terms, so we can uh, deal with these things differently in the future, uh, considering the exhibitions, and then we can ask how we can support this, also with funding, and how can we offer uh, opportunities for people who cannot uh, visit us uh, personally to experience things in other ways. So for f even for 15, 20 years, we have thought about uh, virtuality. For 10 years, uh, we have all needed virtual museum in parallel to us. And now these are the questions which are just uh, accelerated and can be answered more quickly. Do we need it? Can we do it? What does it mean? And as an institution, we also need to see that we have a Berlin audience. Since uh, May, we've now a new large audience, which are the people from Vienna. And, and there we also have to consider our responsibilities, how to deal with major issues, major international exhibitions. Many such questions have been raised in recent months, uh, accelerated by things which happen anyways. Questions we have to ask ourselves anyway. Well, if I properly understand all of you, so you do actually think that this global networking can be an answer to the crisis, but not the only one, if I got you right. Because um, an exchange can be as international, Mr. Lilienthal. 
in the wake of the pandemic, there is a discussion on that anyway, namely whether the globalization led to the pandemic or the political paroles and slogans which we have experienced now need to be reconsidered, for example, whether all the masks have to be produced in Europe and the like. I mean, there were even kind of reactionary responses. And on a certain level, of course, it is a problem, even for me, in the Kammerspiele, for example, if you only have a Munich audience all of a sudden, or if in the Gropiusbau you only have a Berlin audience, the question, well, since Berlin at the same time is a city which is highly international in itself, so for the next 18 months, uh, this uh, will be a big issue, namely how to deal with internationality in our own uh, societies of the cities. At the same time, I think uh, we also need a polemic discourse in society, whether we should stick to cultural and glo uh, economic globalization, or whether we want to aim at something different. Uh, to me, internationalism is high, a lot of fun, and I gain a lot in aesthetic terms from making experience with Lebanese or Japanese um, people or people from Germany in an interchange. At the moment, we prepare a Lebanese festival for Frankfurt for October 21. And there we are working on a version called, meaning that we try to commission productions to Lebanon, but we also prepare a version B, how Europe deals with Lebanese artists. This is due to the pandemic that you have plan A and B and have to do it that way? Yes, of course. Mr. Lehmann, you wanted to come in. You wanted to add a point. That's what I've seen. Just one point regarding the Goethe Institutes. We don't uh, want to uh, put uh, German culture into boxes, take them to other places, showing what it means, and then move away. This is not our, how we want to impart art. But we also focus on partners in the host countries, working on our basis in the ba on the basis of our experience their own experience and then going to joint projects if we cannot travel if we cannot uh, take about go about such projects in a in a physical way the digital form is the only means uh, to establish the structures we need and if we accept that the structures in the host countries go bust because there's no funding because there's no interest because the international dimension is not available then this is hazardous because uh, re-establishing cultures which have got lost is tremendously difficult and that's the decisive thing for activities in society because we imp want to impart culture for the societies and therefore the digital form in difficult times of the pandemic with its restrictions also in physical terms uh, this is all the more important knowing that we have friends in the world that we can work with partners and uh, that we have possibilities through such aspects and attributes to impart a uh, message for civil, civil society i think that's an advantage in our given situation, if you have already such a broadly networked institute with um, such a digital platform and in such a way you can defy the crisis better and you can continue to stay in contact with your partners all over the world, continuing cultural exchange. Correct. Our advantage is that we cannot work in a local or regional way but we can also do organized exchange on the southern hemisphere. We can connect north and south. Hence, the global network has the possibility to rethink this interconnection. 
and uh, working on new opportunities within the network to also consider cultural, linguistic and information-based things in an exchange. Hence, on the one hand, through the pandemic, we are inclined to separate ourselves strongly from one state to the other, borders are being closed, and through the instance of the Goethe network, we can bore holes into these walls in mental terms, enabling us to know that there are similar situations in the other parts of the world which are resolved in a certain way. Hence, on the one hand, there is uh, this uh, separation and closure. Uh, on the other hand, we have the global uh, proximity, which is a kind of paradox, but this ca we can use for our mutual exchange. That's a great advantage. Well, it was briefly mentioned before. I think you mentioned it, the financial dimension of the entire crisis. Mr. Lilienthal. Um, right at the beginning of the pandemic, a lot was talked about the impact on the economy, the disruption in tourism, uh, restaurants and catering, and then they tried to find solutions very quickly. Theatres, museums, concert halls, movies, you know, they, they seem to have been forgotten or not uh, put top of the agenda by politicians. One said, okay, you can go shopping, you can drink, but culture is hardly possible. Do you feel neglected, Mr. Lienenthal? Yes. It's not equal treatment of culture. Especially living in Berlin, where the corona actions on the street and in the restaurants were kept at a low level. So it's all the more correct uh, for the summer festival in Hamburg with the chamber staging at the end of the season, opportunities for activities as also used by Salzburg. So why to indulge in such a social obedience mechanism, especially in culture, that's a reactionary moment uh, started from the Bavarian state government. And what's um, the position of culture in our society? I mean, in restaurants, you can go without masks, sit there at tables, and a lot is possible already. But in theaters, in movies, um, you only have 20 people uh, scattered around. I mean, doesn't that show what culture means for us in Germany? Well, uh, it's a luxury element, uh, a topping you can do without. And that's the wrong perception, very clearly, in my eyes. So it's all the more to be welcomed, like a welcome, like a platform, like a Kulturama of Goethe Institute, and the free theatre scene, the free artist scene, and even people like Anna Imhoff. That is something, uh, and those are people who encounter difficulties. And I think the state also has its uh, commitments. And Imhoff is as important as uh, all the other ones. So from the side of the artists, we need to uh, uh, emphasize that all the more. The city of Munich uh, is saving money for theater plays and uh, theaters and cultural institutions have a loss of two thirds in income. So these are extremely difficult economic situations. And uh, for short uh, working, uh, concepts, it's normally to provide the necessary funding for the losses, but in culture, uh, due to the uh, constitutional nature of the city of Munich, uh, there's no funding, or hardly any subsidization, and that's certainly the wrong approach, and that's a reactionary impulse which is felt, especially in the early phase of the pandemic. Uh, just like against the backdrop of neoliberalism. And uh, that is felt in an uninterrupted way still. Well, Mr. Lehmann, what are you concerned mostly about in culture? What do I have to change in cultural business in the discussion today on cultural activities or business when having heard what Mr. Lilienthal said? Well, I consider the foreign countries mainly, and our foreign partners 
are affected by our situation very strongly because the corona crisis is also a crisis in terms of social policy and society because it's exploited to use authoritarian procedures like censorship and self-censorship and the option of funding as mentioned by Matthias Lilienthal for Germany holds all the more for our foreign partners. Let's take Brazil as an example, or India, where culture is considered a disturbing factor all over. And the funding of cultural options is driven down everywhere. And uh, together with the Foreign Office, uh, with the German Foundations and Goethe Institute, we do not only lack uh, funding for the support of certain structures and their maintenance where we step in, because uh, many governments uh, put uh, the, uh, the cultural realm in the background in many countries. Hence, for us, uh, culture is an issue considering the reduction of public importance, which uh, is uh, jeopardized in many countries, uh, where we have to make sure that uh, culture remains independent as an independent force in society, uh, because this is what we have experienced in other countries in recently. On the other hand, in many countries, many people are concerned regarding the jobs, Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, while uh, everywhere the situation worsens. Israel has an unemployment quote of 21% before it used to be 4%. Hence, uh, the political situations are also shifting, which takes um, culture into a niche. So, um, corner and therefore the actors in culture also need to raise their voices because it won't work with the respective activities in culture because the problems cannot be resolved by political authoritarianism or the economic situation because this is a deeply felt cultural problem. Mrs. Rosenthal, I hope you can see and hear us. Yeah, I hear you as well. Uh, what do you think? Do we need, after having heard, uh, you know, everything, do you need, we need um, a relief program from the government that is for the small stages, theatres, free artists, small galleries? Well, we need uh, public support and funding. It, it has become apparent that uh, there's also an international perspective to it, like in our case. In recent months, we have worked closely with the international network because it became clear that due to the fact we could reopen on the 11th of May, we were the first institution which reopened worldwide. And the big conferences we had with international museums, we've seen that we are privileged in that sense. Of course, it was shocking for us too that we heard on the 4th of May that Syrian was reopened, but the museums were not uh, mentioned. So that is also an element of fear. And within the re realm of the museums, we realized very quickly that something was overlooked, which does not mean that the free and independent scene is much more impaired and needs more support. Especially in international groupings, we are very happy to be in Germany. Uh, I moved to England two, two and a half years uh, ago and experiencing what we can do there and what, our, what my colleagues appear there can underline this all the more, uh, especially in the, the eyes of an international audience. And many of my international friends and colleagues uh, keep saying we are so happy to be here at the moment, which shows uh, the break between those enjoying this privilege in Germany and uh, those in the art scene in other countries. And this is how we view our task and objectives, uh, seeing how uh, strong we can influence through our networks. And 
using our contacts in the different countries, tapping our resources we have, and we also work, work closely with the Goethe Institute in Delhi to do something meaningful for artists on the respective platform in that authoritarian country where people encounter many more problems, especially in culture, using our internationality to provide support and assistance and to offer space for talks and conversations, seeing the big chance to work in a sustained long-term way instead of just uh, taking people, artists there for one or two days, but offering them the possibility to work there for half a year or a year in cooperation with others, authors from other countries in a long-term exchange. That's what we can do. The short-term, quick uh, action is not useful. Therefore, we said we want to have artist residencies where they can stay for a year in a sustained exchange with the involvement of artists from other countries. So we not want to c continue working along these lines, cooperating more in this sense, always with the option A, B. When we cannot travel, we do it by digital means. If we can travel, we can keep people longer in a more intensive exchange. And so this is a big chance also for museums in a very intensive exchange. That means this standstill that it was imposed on all of us led to a situation that our thinking has changed and the way how you design exhibitions, how you think about your own work, if I got you right, so that you say now the shift has happened and now we have to touch it more differently? Yes, but um, what we have tried, we should also get sense and shall be put on a broader basis. For example, contributing to transportation costs, drawing attention to specific problems, also of the museums. What can we still do? What risk is it when we consider transportation costs? What about if the next lockdown comes? So these are very practical um, questions, but also working on content matters on a long-term basis. Well, it has been quite exciting, re-planning and reorganizing each and everything, because it has become high time to ask uh, many questions uh, in the light of many uncertainties, reconsidering our tasks, asking what we want as an exhibition center, also focusing on our indigenous uh, audience, uh, given the fact that we are so international, uh, also considering internationality, which we want to live uh, on a domestic basis too. Uh, so there are many big issues in this interlinkage still. Well, I would like to briefly come back to the crisis for many um, independent single artists. It's not only the artists, the musicians, the editors, the producers, the directors, but a lot of organizers, service providers, um, freelancers, um, sound technicians, you know, all the people in the background. Stages and clubs were closed first and some of them are still closed. So for many, Corona means bankruptcy. So how do you deal with that? How do you think will that change the cultural landscape in Germany or maybe also in the world? And what do we have to do in order to prevent this uh, wave of bankruptcy? The cultural landscape will look totally differently. Our cities will look clearly differently. You see it in many empty standing shops already or many clubs which are too close. So it's extremely important to maintain such locations, providing budgets for this purpose to make sure that they can restart after one or two years' time. And it would be appropriate to rethink theatres and their existence, creating alternative uh, playgrounds, so to say. 
So we should not only stick to the still existing things in March 2020, but we need a cultural plan, a kind of a Marshall plan for culture mm -hmm. for yeah. the years to come. And this Marshall Plan, we talked about it, Mrs. Rosenthal, how things change or have to change, maybe. I think between the 13th and of August and 13th of September, you have an exhibition which is called Down to Earth. You mentioned that with changed working modes, rethinking internationally. In that exhibition, you have the question in how way the agenda of a climate policy turnaround affects our own operating system. Are these questions that only occurred after we have had the pandemic or were that things that you thought about before? Well, these are things which I have thought about anyway. That has been reinforced, reinforced and it's now of particular relevance. But the issue of uh, sustainability, the Gropius Bau, climatic uh, considerations, uh, the well, bringing in artists given the climatic problems, only going into digital means and uh, restrictive art and tech and so forth. Well, these are aspects which uh, run in parallel. And the question is what our content should be, the content of the exhibitions, uh, the content keeping artists busy. But of course, we are in an extremely privileged position and the freelance people, self-employed people who cannot appear at the moment, people who don't have exhibitions now, well, that's really about this sheer existence. And there we can offer support and assistance to simply survive, bearing in mind that we have actors in Germany uh, who still need to survive and many who cannot appear anymore. So the question is, how can we help as institutions in cooperation with theatres? What kind of installations can we do in theatres, offering our rooms where people move through individually? Hence, things we need to need to rethink as large institutions, and such ideas develop because we realise that there are so many friends who cannot play and um, appear at the moment, while we have our salaries still. So we here need to think ahead. So thinking new. What I regard interesting with the exhibition that I mentioned, um, there is a co-curator of the artist team Segal, who has worked in a sustainable manner for a long time and travels in a sustainable manner as well. And with respect to the given situation, that's so interesting because the pandemic has shown to us that maybe we should start thinking things in a different way locally but also internationally and particularly with respect to exhibitions and assuming more responsibility for your own action especially this exhibition cycle and maybe that's also true for theater festivals you know the world of artists is like a circus you know traveling from one um, arts fair to another or exhibition to another it's kind of um, arts hopping um, do you think that has to change or will change due to that crisis? It will change. It has to change, as we have known for a while. So it's always this kind of balance. Of course, the exchange is also important. We don't want to isolate ourselves. And uh, there's also a central load of art and culture to show other perspectives. But to have this and contribute it, we need this kind of exchange. But uh, the art circus, as you call it, which should reduce itself with the journeys of the biennials and art fairs, well, they also need to be di digital forms like the art bail, which has also been resolved in digital terms, which is not that uh, successful in commercial terms, but yet there are options. And there's also the thinking in the commercial v world, according to which instead of paying enormous funds, we just take part in by digital means. And uh, the same goes for the journeys, which you otherwise do to get informed. 
So, by all means, uh, this element will be reduced, and the question always is how to see a piece of art if you don't see it. <laughs> how you can still feel it and sense it, and it won't work completely without attending. And for that, we also need to use existing networks in a close exchange with colleagues, and then maybe one curator lives in Delhi, another in Rio, and you would ask what can they contribute. Hmm? And uh, uh, for that, uh, I need to have the allowance to hire someone who is living there to to live on permanent uh, salary instead of us travel there once a year. Well, I would like to ask one other mm. subject about before I come to the end, which I regard really important, what it does to us as a society, breaking taboos, um, overcoming limits. I mean, that's part of arts and the reason why people go to theatres, Mr. Lienenthal, and arts has something uh, like comfort and healing in it. The energies uh, of that you hardly see any longer, but you also see how much they are missing, especially for the younger generation. Those who can't go to clubs any longer, that can't have parties or festivals together with their peer group. Um, what does it do to society? if basic needs that are there cannot be fulfilled. Let me compare it to the end of the GDR. <coughs> well, the individual, the individual has become the predominant element. In the past 10 to 15 years, something positive has happened, namely that our society in mobility has been based more and more on exchange. And this exchange, this proximity, is now replaced by social distancing. You can see it in states, but also in the uh, media and theatres and the public law, and the element of the colleagues is also lacking, or the element of the boss. Uh, would, things can be enforced by other means, and this is also true for the German society. And therefore, in social distancing, we need to rediscover proximity. In all the discussions about that, uh, the youth in the Hasenheit and the Gärtnerplatz uh, can party because you cannot tell 18-year-old young people uh, during the next two, five or ten years you must not be close to other people. That won't work. Instead, uh, you can just negotiate rules how to limit risks and uh, enable contacts nevertheless. And if there should be something like an end of the pandemic once, the notion of proximity will play an enormous role for the years after. As Stephanie said, international theatre festivals need to be reconceived, how to resort them in a world of climatic disasters and pandemics. And for that, we need to develop new forms, also developing of dealing with one another. Mr. Lehmann, as Mr. Lilienthal said that, whenever this after the crisis will be, um, <coughs> Germany or the world, will it be poorer in terms of culture? Jan Fohler said, a cello player, that uh, classical music might disappear in parts of the world. That would be dramatic. Well, we need to articulate in, in favor of art that it's a kind of an element of unrest because it contributes new ideas, surprises, new things in terms of content. And we need to maintain this position of culture because otherwise all of that is lost and a part of the debate and the discussion would be lost for society. Uh, the Goethe Medal of this year was uh, not awarded in uh, uh, in Weimar, but we have to imp impart it uh, digitally, which also contributes a new position. It means uh, we're standing a contradiction. The, the contribution, the 
contributing element of uh, contradiction, also given the separation in the digital realm, also in the digital media, everyone just wants to be to see him or herself reconfirmed instead of contributing to the debate in the usual way uh, in an active exchange. So if we lose this possibility of going about the discourse, society would lose something very meaningful because this represents our future capability uh, dealing with ideas, accepting ideas, also involving peoples with other thinking, not in a homogeneous way, on the contrary, because the variety of culture is very decisive. And this variety in culture can only um, uh, be fruitful and multiply if we give it its place it deserves. And in the, the light of that, we need to see that the tendencies of separation also in thinking, which is not only an, a phenomenon of pandemic, but it's only reinforced by it, uh, shall be balanced out. I remember one project from the time before the pandemic, where we uh, cooperated with universities, not talking to one another, which you can uh, in U Ukraine, in Georgia, in Germany, and so forth. Hence, you could uh, register in such universities. You could study in the realm of culture, and the people who worked with one another in the virtual world continued working, although the borders were closed. I think those are very decisive elements illustrating in a very clear way that we have certain tasks through the contributions of culture. In politics, we have clear protocols, uh, very clear leadership, whilst in uh, culture we can use this creativity, which is highly decisive. Just before we come to the end, just coming back to where we began, my last question, and please give a short answer. Do we need a new system? The idea of a globalized world, is it over? Yes or no? The situation shows very clearly that there's a demand for a global multilateral world because in this very variety we see the complexity of our world. And if you cannot go into exchange, then we have reached the tethered ends of our own possibilities without having the possibility to develop further. We would just dry out and be covered by dust. So we need to find hybrid forms using qualities in such a way that the instruments with their contents could fructify and offer options for authenticity and options for creativity, then we have this chance. Mrs. Rosenthal? Well, it's the uh, task to look for new strategies and options. That's inherent. And it has always been our task to propagate openness, because openness does not mean to separate ourselves and say this is the end of the globe, but the way we see it is decisive. And there we all have to rethink faster instead of saying what we have done in recent years, talking a lot about it, and then just keeping continuing as we did in the past, but learning instead that we can communicate differently, use other networks, and, uh, well, we don't see an end of the pandemic, maybe not, but we do hope uh, that we uh, can develop options all the while and see that people can be different and then we can still along the same lines in the same space. Mr. Lienthal? Yes, we need a new system, we need to change a lot, and we need to have even more globalization than before, but a different one. This is a beautiful closing word. Thank you very, very much for the discussion, the exchange, although the difficulties were a bit difficult. Um, thank you very much for the discussion. Thank you very much to the audience for having listened in. And I do hope very much that next year again we have the possibility to be back live on the book fair, having our live exchange. All the best. Stay healthy. That's most important. Tschüss. Goodbye. All the best to all of you.